In this episode of the RV Small Talk podcast, we're going to talk about things that we are seeing right now in the RV industry. And folks, it's getting more Wild West than it had been already. Pew, pew. And we're talking about the manufacturing part of this business, which is pretty wild right now. So let's talk also about animals. Can we talk about animals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ones we don't want in our campsite? Not Muppet? Not Muppet. Not Muppet. Can we talk about Muppets, too? Oh, we could talk about Muppets, too. But I don't think Muppets are going to be in your campsite. Just saying. Wah, wah. <laughs> this week's podcast sponsor is Intech RV. And we know Intech RV's quality across all of their products. Clint camps and loves their flyer line, which is more rugged, utilitarian. Uh, PJ and I have the Soul and the Terra lines, and they're a little bit more glampy, Mm -hmm. sophisticated, um, like us, you know? Yeah, but you know, regardless of which line you follow, they all have welded aluminum cage frames. They pay such great attention to every single detail. So if you're looking for quality, regardless of what style you like, check out intechrv.com. We love them and we really think you will too. I mean, we kid you not, they're fantastic. That's intechrv.com. Again, welcome to the RV Small Talk podcast where we talk about lightweight trailers, truck campers, and the people and places that go along with them. We are your hosts from Princess Craft RV. I'm Clint. I'm Lindsay. And I'm PJ. Thanks so much for joining us today. I want to remind you one more time that we have ways to ask questions or submit comments. Email us at questions at rvsmalltalk.com or just call and leave us a voice message. Yes, please. At 512 843 1311. That's 512 843 1311. If you would like to leave us a voice message with just comments or questions, let's dive in. All right, PJ, things have been the phone calls that I've been overhearing lately as you've been receiving them from manufacturers. Right. They're getting really weird. (sighs) What's going on? Well, you know, a little of everything. Manufacturers are trying to not make a big deal of it. So a lot of people I don't think are really aware of what's happening. Uh, I am getting calls almost every day from some part of manufacturing that says, "Uh, we're going to be building these, but we don't have any air conditioners. So will you take them without air conditioners? Well, uh, okay. All right. Well, we discontinued awnings on this line. So they'll all be coming in, but you need to tell your customers no awnings. The ones who have already bought. Yes, of course. And But this you has know, been so much the case for months now. But it is still happening. Right now, it is, instead of getting better, because we're all starting to feel a little better about COVID. You know, we don't feel, uh, we feel like there's an end in sight. The manufacturers are actually getting worse. Uh, there is a chassis shortage right now. Well, you need one of those. For trailers in particular. (laughs) Step step one. You cannot (laughs) transport it to me without a frame and wheels. So that's been really interesting. You know, I think that that's one thing that a lot of consumers, particularly if they're new to RVing or trailers, they don't realize that many, if not most manufacturers, don't build their own chassis and frame in-house. They bring them in from places like Lippert. Right. And then they design and engineer their space to go on top of that frame. Or right. Chassis. And there's several frame manufacturers that are kind of standard in the industry. Uh-huh. But if they're running short, who do you give the frames to? I mean, so especially what we deal with, which is a lot of... Uh, niche markets and specialty units right not the Those, not the huge not the manufacturer. mega manufacturers yeah. yeah so they're they're struggling with some of the real basic things i mean we had a situation uh where we needed faucets to get some units out the doors because we had some failures and so they said they didn't have them to send us i called up and i simply said well just pull one off the line they said no you don't understand Our line is sitting here waiting for faucets and the whole line, the whole line, not just our units. And we're hoping to get them next week. Uh, But it's just that's still such a part of the industry right now. Um, I think it's worth just mentioning so that people out there who are looking at trailers will know. I I think it's yeah, I think it's frustrating because 
I mean, again, this is, I feel like anybody who's bought an RV in the past few months or put one on order already knows this, right? That nothing has changed. But the fact that there's no like, this is when it's going to end, right? Like we're going to get faucets next week. No, yes. we're expecting to get faucets <laughs> next week, but we might not. And even if we do, it it might be something else the week yes. after that. So I think it's like the unknown and just like, I don't know, waiting when you don't have a finish line. That's scrambling. really, really hard. And yeah. yeah, the manufacturers are struggling. The dealers are struggling. And of course, the customer is struggling with waiting. Yeah. It's don't not you, fun. Don't you think it's kind of tied to the, the idea that, you know, we all know that COVID and the problems that we've had with supply issues. However, we are now talking about opening up everything about kind of the end of the quarantine period and trying to get back to normal. And customers are now associating production getting back to normal. Right. Because the quarantine but it's is not. ending. But that is not happening. It is not running neck and neck. And I wonder if that's what people are thinking is that, you know, OK, we'll all the get to go over. to a restaurant soon. Right. So our trailer should be back on track. Right. But they aren't made in the same kitchen. I do. I like to I like to um, remind people that I forgot what I was going to say. Sorry. You can just cut that out. I was going to say something. Was it going to be deep? No. Was it gonna of course be not. Useful? Have you met me? <laughs> no. Very, very shallow. Oh, man. Never mind. I feel like I, I feel like. Uh, along with that dynamic that you just expressed where people are starting to feel mm -hmm. like they can come out of their caves mm -hmm. and everything should be ramping up, but not all segments are at the same time. I feel like we're getting more uh, tense interactions as well because with of that. customers here at Princess Craft? Right, because that, that <laughs> uh, expectation is there and we can't, and the reality that we present them doesn't yeah. match that expectation. Well, and we have this thing called the internet where everybody can go and kind of hype each other up, right? right. And be like, well, I got mine. Well, I didn't get mine. Well, mine's broken. Bah, 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 right. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's how it goes. Right. And and you're seeing manufacturers trying to do the best they can to stay as true to their original plans for their product lines. And yet they may have to put in a different faucet because there's no other choice. Right. But that's yeah. OK, that's what I was going to say, is that I really try to remind people, customers, that the manufacturers want the trailers like to be delivered to you just as much as you want it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like mm -hmm. nobody's dragging their feet here. <laughs> the dealership we all want it to really, happen. <laughs> really wants you to have your camper because we can't, you know, we can't get more and then the manufacturers can't make more. So, like, we all want the same thing. It's not like we're just like, nah. It, it all feels pretty weird, too, as a dealership to be whining about it and saying, look, we'd love to tell you it'll be here in three weeks, but we just hate to I promise. Have, so yeah. we look like we're not even trying. So it's a it's a weird dynamic. People are starting to yeah. want to feel better about it things. It feels and like we a, are still struggling. Definitely yeah. feels like a damned if you do, damned if you don't. <laughs> right. You know, you, the, a no win situation for absolutely everybody involved. Yes. I, I think we're, you know, I, my, who knows, but I, we're going to struggle with this for, through the rest of yeah. this year. And we're going to just do what we can do. And manufacturers are doing the same thing. Yeah. And supply lines is, is the major thing across all of the brands we carry and everyone, everyone else carries. But in particular, there's unforeseen things like what happened with Forest River. Ooh, yes. Oh, oh no. no. And we yeah. carry some Forest Sad. River products. We do. So what he's talking about is uh, the plant that builds the walls, they call it laminating because it's laminated side. Mm -hmm. So the laminating plant for our pod, Surveyor, Nobo, and... Was it GeoPro? And, and no. Ibex. Ibex, Ibex okay. yeah. Yeah. Two of which we carry here at Princess right. Craft. It literally burnt to the ground two weeks ago. Yeah. And they say, we'll just be a month behind and we're going to get another plant up and running in a wow. month. In a month? But to build a plant, you have to have all these things that people are having trouble getting. Right. right. Like, like steel and... Like steel and framing and <laughs> widgets and, and there, There's going to be have to be a faucet in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and people. And it's just going to be... I uh, A month is like a... 
That's like, a lofty yes. goal right there. Yeah, I'm not sure I would have put shocking. out there that kind of a timeline. Yeah, watch it. Uh, yeah. Hmm. So we're we're waiting. I uh, just the world is different, and it will be back to normal. It's just still not going to be right now. Yeah. That's kind of what we still work on day to day, and it's been guys. A year. Yeah. It's it has been, a, been year. a year. I don't like to talk about that. We are <laughs> we, we are still, yeah, working. Yeah. Working with these manufacturers really closely. Yeah, how about we jump to something that, that's kind of close to our heart and Yay. maybe a little bit more of a... More An fun. Upper, yeah. More yeah. exciting. Yeah. yeah. Lindsay, what's the status of our rallies? Rallies. Okay. So our our I'm really excited. We're actually in the final stages of putting together the schedule, which will be out... Um, very soon our texas tiny trailer rally is april 29th to may 2nd so thursday through sunday that's coming up soon it is but there are still spots there's still spots and we have over 50 percent of the people are newbies we have about 60 trailers coming as of right now but there's still plenty of room and i'm just really really excited we're gonna have like a happy hour with some live music we're gonna have like an outdoor movie um i need some movie suggestions we need to start thinking about that yeah yeah remember at the beginning of this podcast Mm -hmm. we gave you an email and a phone number so give us your movie ideas yes well the rallies will be super fun so y'all check it out texas tiny trailer rally Dot com. Or if you're a truck camper aficionado, we have Woo-hoo. do we have something for you? <laughs> <laughs> but wait, there's more. Roll on over to Texas Truck Camper Rally.com because we've got a segment just for you, a, a rally just for you, and it's going to be fun just for you. <laughs> that was so inspiring. They are fun. And that yeah. truck camper rally will take place the weekend after. It's May 6th through. N- Ninth. So the Texas Truck Camper Rally is the weekend after that. Very cool. Y'all check it out if you like truck campers or if you have a truck camper. Can I say that both of these rallies have had a significant number of people through the years who've come through who had no trailer or had no truck camper, but they really wanted to learn about them because they were right on the edge of jumping off into that lifestyle. Oh, we love chatting with those people. Yeah. Come on in and join us. Come for a day or to rent a cabin or something. Bring a tent. Who, who cares? If you're coming, join up. Go ahead and sign up because you get to meet the people, ask the questions, see the rigs, enjoy the talks, have some bonfire time or outdoor fire fire time watch some movies who knows did we mention that these are free they're completely free you just have to pay for your spot and uh yeah you're right the ralliers just kind of become like a second family and they help each other out and um i don't know i just really really enjoy hanging out with them i'm really excited for for rally time it's almost rally time we're gonna rally okay how about now let's move into the meat of the matter Unless you're are not into meat, meat or the matters. I'm hungry. <laughs> no, we are not. Well, I wouldn't say we're talking about meat, but we're, we are definitely talking about how not to become something on the menu for wildlife while oh, we're camping. Wildlife is meat. Yeah, but we don't want them to eat the, that meat to eat uh, us. Well, we don't or want our to food. eat that meat either. I mean, oh. so, some Can of the, we move past this? Have you ever eaten a <laughs> raccoon? What's your favorite Muppet movie? <laughs> The first one. I don't know what we're talking about. Wait, the first raccoon or the first Muppet movie? <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Some tips on how to proactively choose and set up your campsite to keep you more protected from said raccoons. But does, n- does that really help? And Muppets. Does that really help? Does what There really are professionals help? who follow these rules. I would imagine there's a reason why. Okay. But... Well, so if you get a campsite at a campground, you're stuck where you are. But if you're uh, on BLM land yeah, or trying to figure out where to camp, and, this would be helpful. And this is a big deal because it's harder, harder and harder to find a campsite at an RV park or what mm-hmm. have you right now. And a lot of the people who are new to RVing right now really have in mind public land, BLM land camping off grid where you just find a place. and Which is great. Up. You just need to remember that there are other things that live there yeah you're 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 stepping into habitat and so so we want to keep ourselves safe but this is another thing if you're we're keeping ourselves safe we're also keeping the wildlife safe like the raccoons like the raccoons okay so let's start with location like where you set up your camper 
um, is going to be a big factor in how much wildlife you're intruding on or will intrude upon you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, let's jump in with what we think we know. What we think we know. (laughs) What we think we know. I think the location is is number one with me as well. You know, you don't want to set up right where the, where the animals are usually going to be where they're traveling, like on a game trail, you've, you've been outdoors, you've seen natural pathways. So isn't that- They're highways. The, yeah. Um, isn't that the most, the most uh, appreciate, what am I trying to say? Isn't that the most interesting place though, to camp? Where you're by the water, you've got a little path right there next to your campsite. Uh-huh. I mean, is that a mistake people make? Because that's certainly yes. what I would go to. And by the way, the critters that come through our backyard, we have coyotes, raccoons, um, raccoons, lots of raccoons. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. We have um, what are Fox. they called? Foxes. We have all kinds of critters. Right. They always, always, always poop on the path. Always. Yes. Yeah, I'm like we have a whole acre back there they of nice grassy land. They yeah, weren't but raised in the they, same social circles that you and, and I. They <laughs> always wait till they get on the paths. Uh huh. And geez. Which is geez. another good. So I guess I never thought yeah, of that. That's a good good sign. If you see poop on the path, don't set up your campsite on that section of the path. <laughs> <laughs> so you hike the path and then set up your campsite. Well, I don't know. Um, I I like to I understand wanting to see those trails and hike those trails and all that. Absolutely. If I'm out on a hike or I'm backpacking, take the trail. That's that's where you're going to see really cool things. But I don't want my rig, my trailer set up on it or right next to it. That's just inviting them to wander by. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And it's being intrusive to them. Yeah. It's their home. Okay. Um, So how far away? 50 feet? I don't know an exact number. You know, okay. use your best judgment. Yeah. Don't okay. don't park on the path. Yeah. So so if you see lots of animal signs like like those paths, uh, a well worn nature path, droppings or rubs, anything with, that has grows antlers and sheds them, they're going to be doing rubs on scrubby brush and trees and all that. Yeah. I like to take note of those when I'm camping and hiking because it's neat, but I don't want to set up near it. What about water? Uh, that's one of the basic needs of all living things, carbon-based water things like great. that. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. That's so a, we talk a lot about camping by water, especially in the summer. But yeah. that's where the animals will be, right? Well, again, I'm talking more BLM land or public land versus park. Okay. And okay. so I'm so reframe this. If you're in a park, then I'll bet by now. The wildlife has established that this is a human area because of the human smell and activities always going on. Okay, but makes sense. But if you're sense. way out there, then I wouldn't be right there. If it's easy access to water, easy access to a food source for animals, then I like to give those areas space. Okay. How do you know if it's easy access? Uh, if you can get to the water easily, it's easy access. Wait, but that's where I want to camp. Well, back it up. <laughs> back it up, Lindsay. <laughs> okay, so we may not we may not actually I mean, I guess the last thing beyond location is is food and waste management. You always hear about this, but I'm not necessarily sure what that means other than you don't want to have things out exposed and smelly right next to your space. Well, how do you not do that? Well, I've always heard like if you're in bear country, use the bear lockable bear bins that they put out there sure. or hang stuff in trees and, uh, you know, use the right type of hanging method. But I haven't done so much of this that I know this like an expert would. So I started looking things up online because that's that's how I spend my that's time. That's what people do, right? Yep. And I found a really cool thing on, on the Gore-Tex website and they are way more expertish on these things than I am. So I, I thought I would uh, share that with you. Okay. And we can just kind of discuss the things as we go through them. All right. Okay, so the first thing they start with is actually choosing a campsite. And they they kind of broke this down on some of the more, some of the animals that people are more leery of. You know, the uh, the bears, the snakes, raccoons, mosquitoes. So that's kind of where you see. I like the all of those except for mosquitoes. Yeah, yeah. yeah but-, but I don't want them to, I, I, I want to be on the right terms with them when I meet them. Fine. You know? I don't want a snake in my boot. I want a raccoon in my tent. No. But they're so cute. Do you remember when I had that pet raccoon? 
Yes. And his name was well, Hendrix, and I fed him out of a bottle, and, and I took him to school. Well, the reality is, for all of you animal <laughs> lovers out there, so you don't send us hate mail, the reality was these poor, tiny, oh, yeah, no. minuscule baby raccoons ended up on a front under, porch. A, yeah. under a floorboard in a car <laughs> and then ended up being yeah. left with us. Yeah, don't send me hate mail. So, we set him free yeah. after he grew up. He was we, wonderful. We made sure he could eat and drink, and then we set him free. That email is questions at rvsmalltalk.com. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we we no. did it through the animal rescue people. Yes, it's, everything is fine. His and name they was said, Hendrix. He was loved. <laughs> they they said still be, send postcards. He does? No, he doesn't. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, water is attractive to snakes, mosquitoes, raccoons, and bears. We we just talked about that. It's attractive to us too. Yeah, yeah. we like water. We like to be by it. We like to camp near it. Um, it makes a beautiful, full, picturesque setting. But when you're in the wilds, not in a set up park or resort, then they get the right away in my mind. What about okay? So, fallen trees, piles, piles of locks. Do they mean rocks? Yes. <laughs> Typo. <laughs> uh, piles leaf piles. You know those areas that like snakes and bugs just, I mean, you look at it and you're like, yeah, there's a snake right. in there. Don't camp next to that. That's, yeah. you know, where don't, they like to hide. Don't make that the centerpiece of your setup. <laughs> right. <laughs> M- make it the distant backdrop of your setup. <laughs> and I would think, what if if you're in the forest and it's just covered in in grasses and rocks and trees and it's all really tall grass? Yeah. I guess what do you do? Just try to find the biggest, flattest spot you can. Grab two sticks. Oh, oh, we're going parent trap on this. Yeah, and bang them together <laughs> as you walk around the campsite. Yeah. I mean, the, if the whole thing is like, just. I mean, I, I guess that's my question. It, you just do the best you can to find an open Make space. Make a lot of yeah. noise before you set up camp and then... Well, just... that's one of the things on the list is yeah. to make noise. Sure, sure. And and we're going to get down to some neat ways of making noise and all that, or maybe not so neat. It, it just ways. But <laughs> okay. I think what, what you do is you look, you survey the area and you find the least likely places that will be shelter, cover, home, and or food or water. Now, if it's the least likely place, then it, the wildlife is going to generally work around that least likely place. So Just use your common sense. Yeah, the most open place that has the least amount of natural cover for them. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Um, and and if you're avoiding those uh, those mosquitoes, I mean, you're going to have to to be aware of wooded areas and very damp moist area and if you're in yeah. texas yeah. They, you, got you mosquitoes. can't avoid them yeah they're gonna find you bring bug spray yeah and the further east texas you get the more vicious yeah. they get because it's the, the bigger swampy. and hungrier they get it's mm-hmm. crazy mm-hmm. crazy crazy so okay you picked your spot and you're then what what do you do to keep these animals from wanting to come in and explore and visit you sing at your campsite really loudly which in in y'all's family happens all the time right i mean (laughs) yeah that's true that's true but i don't want to sing all night now Lindsay might be able to you don't want to sing all night i do not want to sing all night i don't set up shifts no we don't (laughs) singing shifts Wake up. <laughs> it's your turn to sing. It's your, it's your turn. turn. Guys, is, is guys and dolls is up. <laughs> All right. I'll, what do I have? Oh, I have newsies. We're good. <laughs> 76 trombones in the parade. We were just singing that yesterday, weren't we? We were. It's true. It's true. So, um, so what if we jump over to some more specific categories? Let's start with that really annoying one, the mosquitoes. Mosquitoes. Skeeters. Okay. I see this list. Yeah. Do you and like it or I, do you just like it? I mean, it looks nice, but like I can say no, 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 no to all of these. They don't work. Oh. Except for fire. Just light everything on fire. But I, I have done all of these things. It doesn't work for Texas mosquitoes. I so, don't know where you guys are. Maybe it's different. Mm, mm. So here's the list that they put out there. Citronella candles, nope. which <laughs> they help. But it has to get really strong. And you have to have it it like right next to your face. (laughs) Coffee grounds. Coffee grounds. I mean, I could, we could always bring a 10 pound bag of coffee grounds. But what do you do? Do You just like sprinkle it on the ground. Around the ground. Um, (gasps) On your face, like a football player. Hang it on your neck. (laughs) Pre coffee grounds or post coffee grounds? (laughs) 
<laughs> I, I don't know. I'm a. I don't know. Coffee on the ground. Coffee grounds. Oh. <laughs> Oh, okay. We're never getting through this list. Okay, what about what about <laughs> garlic? Yeah. Hang it around your neck like does, in medieval I times. I wonder I mean, does garlic work? I mean well, I've I've mowed over some natural wild garlic out there. And it's pretty strong. It's pretty darn strong. Like bring tears to your eyes. Make yeah. your ears ring kind of so, strong. So but what is what are they saying? You have to eat a lot of garlic or you have to No, these crush are it I mean, up you and could, put it or on, you could spray or you could it. soak it in water I'm not and doing spray anything it around. with garlic. I don't want garlic on my campground. Okay. Sulfur is on here, but what kind of? I don't understand uh, what sulfur that's is. That's a hard nope. Just the egg smell. Yeah, sulfur. like <laughs> what am I gonna? Where put? do you do? No you buy wonder sulfur? mosquitoes don't like these uh, things. Well, They're terrible. <laughs> I'll tell you what the the well water out at the, at the family ranch <laughs> is kind of sulfury, and no. uh, and I haven't had many mosquito issues around the well. Can you buy sulfur? Yeah, yeah. Well, where do you buy it? There's like sulfur cream. There's sulfur spray. There's like for for bugs like bug spray that says sulfur yeah talk to jackie she knows where to get it okay <laughs> i just i don't understand i don't know okay the ones that i've heard definitely are the lavender rosemary nope, apple nope. cider vinegar nope. um i mean i've heard of these things but i do have to wonder how much do you have to I've have spent, yeah i've spent so much money on like natural bug sprays with essential oils and this and that trying to keep the mosquitoes off my kids especially when they were babies and you can't just like spray them in the face with deet uh-huh. um it doesn't work but again these are aggressive texas mosquitoes <laughs> they um, ride in like the three four yeah. five six seven horsemen of the apocalypse yeah. and it just <laughs> it just doesn't work well then there's that stuff that that's like the bug spray people put out that you put around your wrists uh-huh. i've tried it and the stickers yeah, and the bracelets and the, the patch for mosquitoes the, the sound wave <laughs> thing that does something and you turn it on and it sends sound waves or something none of it works get yourself some deep woods off <laughs> just all call the it a day <laughs> all the deep so so uh fire fireworks <laughs> and wind works yes wind yes. does okay if you can get some place that's breezy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that that works a little more open just grab yourself a lighter and then like a, a can of hairspray. Yeah, make yourself a torch. And then just like <laughs> that's that's what I give to Everett all the time. I'm like, go go for no, it, kid. No, no. no, he's only, no you don't. He's only no, two, don't. but he really he's likes it. He's getting older. He's getting older. He needs to learn these things. And he needs to learn what it's like to regrow your eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, right. if y'all have great solutions for mosquitoes, we want to know. Please bring them on. We are calling you know what on this list. We may because not believe we have you. Tried them, <laughs> uh, so we'll try something else. All but right. what about rodents? What uh, about what about those creature crawly things? Yeah. Creature, that, creature, creature is what I mean. Creature, yeah. yeah you know. the, the big thing, and in particularly trailers. I mean, people have a real issue with mice and rats. Oh, that's true. Because they can get in the smallest of spaces. Now let's get this over with right now. Does Irish Spring soap no. really work? No, it gives them but really clean teeth. Right up your trailer. It doesn't work. Stop doing it. Yeah, and you know what? I uh, I mentioned that on a very early podcast that it was something that people were, were talking about, and I hadn't done a whole lot of research. But after that podcast, I was like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, this is this comes up every year, and yes. every year it's wrong. Yes. And every year it's wrong. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, you know, who knows if it helps, but it certainly doesn't stop it. So what does work? Uh, garlic. <laughs> Sulfur. Vinegar. Gar- yeah. Garlic is the first thing things. on the list. Stinky things. Uh, and natural dog and cat repellent. Hmm. I, now, I actually have used that at certain times and it did work. It did. It kept, kept yeah. the mice out. Yes. And okay. we did it with, we had some mice that we couldn't keep out of a, a wood pile. Okay. And they just kept coming back. So I sprayed it for a while. You really with that liked dog. that wood pile? And it worked. I, I just didn't want them to like crawl out when I picked up the wood. Uh, I just wanted them not to live there. Okay. Okay. It was near my house. They I can visit. There. You make yeah. a terrible landlord. I, I would be terrible. <laughs> Get yes, <out>. absolutely. <laughs> so that did work. I mean, I didn't try sulfur or vinegar or ammonia, but. But light just shine a flashlight in there yeah now this one this one is interesting to me because it's actually quite simple particularly with the new led light strips and solar powered options and things like that that are really energy efficient but you know, i never thought about that it causes this is a real point of contention on all the forums on having lit up spaces um mm-hmm. 
during while you're camping if other people are nearby or could see it if it could ruin their experience but i have seen a lot of people they'll actually run strips of lighting underneath their trailer so it's not directly in one's face oh what a good but idea it, but it turns into this nice little glow underneath their trailer and no rodent is gonna get near that and be like oh well, a well-lit area i don't know i don't know if that's why they do it. i think they do it for vanity purposes well, but right, maybe but i'm saying maybe it has that function as well mm -hmm. So if you ran a, a rope of LED around the base of your trailer on the inside of the frame, yeah, that might be. Yeah, the next section here is how to keep raccoons away. So um, I vote wants to, to skip that. Yeah, Lindsay wants to skip it. <laughs> she wants to invite them in. Send give give you the raccoons Lindsay's address. I don't want to okay. keep them away. Let's, how do I get them to my trailer? Well, oh my let's, gosh, let's they will fair. just trash everything in your yeah. campsite. Though. I trash everything in my campsite. <laughs> okay, fair. Well, you'd have something to blame other than the kids. I'm a raccoon at heart. But that explains. It. I like to eat things and trash things. But all the same things ha work with raccoons, right? Uh, oh, so the first thing on the list is bum, 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 garlic. garlic. <laughs> hey, buy yourself some garlic in bulk and just like. Yeah. yeah. Maybe maybe that could be like a a, a camper like welcome packet. You yeah. Know? Just, just like a clove of garlic. Yeah. Just a bushel. <laughs> just That's bring them to your neighbors here's, when you when you <laughs> here's your lay of garlic uh, natural dog and cat repellent cayenne pepper black pepper and once again ammonia i see ammonia enough times that i'm wondering if, if we should just be peeing around our campsites no uh, no let's skip on that well, it's largely what if it's already do not been encourage done. My, <laughs> do not encourage my husband. Okay, <laughs> I was, just, I, I was he bring, doesn't listen to the podcast. <laughs> I was going to bring true. my two year old back up and say it's on. <laughs> just big old circle. Mm -hmm. I mean, but, there is a lot of ammonia. I mean, but who wants to? Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. And it, and here's the deal. I mean, that's oh, I'd be selective about that. Ammonia is not good for living things in general. They, you know. I don't want it on me and I don't want it yeah. on my food and I don't want it in my habitat. Our RVs when we set up is temporary in habitat. Right. right. And we're just like spraying ammonia everywhere. But yeah. I like the or... cayenne pepper and the black pepper because especially raccoons are going to be looking oh, for they your taste trash. So good. They like it spicy. For your food. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna be they're gonna be looking for things to eat for the most part. However, they're curious, yeah. and they will knock over chairs, lights, tables, everything. Sure, and a little bit of cayenne pepper around your trash and around maybe your cooking table that may have some grease on it, mm -hmm. or you know even just your your mat and your chairs, anything like that. That's easy to do, super easy to do, and they don't like that. They don't like it. They do not like it, and they will sniff it and go, eh, "I don't want to mess with this." Okay. All right. What about what about the uh, the legless ones? The snakeies. Mm, the they can come too. The snacks. The snack. Okay. So they are repelled by smells as well. Number one, sulfur. What? They don't like the smell of sulfuric Who eggs. Does. <laughs> yeah. Well, apparently that works for everything but raccoons. If you go by our list. Oh. Uh, they, raccoons don't mind sulfur yeah, they, like, <laughs> rotten eggs, eggs are just yeah, fine they love it <laughs> but a combination of cinnamon and clove oils mm. hmm that sounds yummy but i wonder why that because that's that's like a that's lot that's just work. for snakes snakes hate christmas time oh well i mean they're generally not out <laughs> <laughs> They're generally not out in the winter. What's that? What's that drink you make out of like eggnog? No, no. The the uh, it's like it's like uh, uh, y'all help us out. <laughs> uh, just it's like tea, but with cinnamon and cloves and like eggnog, like red wine. Stop. Yes, like, <laughs> like mulled, mulled cider. Wine, mulled, yeah, mulled wine. Yeah, yes. <laughs> We're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just cinnamon and cloves. Okay, snakes hate it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just buy yourself some commercial snake repellent, which is on our list, and use that. But that only works on snakes that are in advertising. Why? Well, no. No. The ones that are selling things. Oh, look, look at the last thing on the list. <laughs> Ammonia. Uh, what? You see a snake? Just pee on it. <laughs> Clint, stop. No, he's not going to stop. Can, I know he's not. Can we talk about bears? Can we pee on them? <laughs> no. I don't know. No. Ammonia is on the list for bears. No peeing on bears. What if it's a baby bear? <laughs> 
Mama no like it. <laughs> <laughs> High pitched noises. I know how to do that one. So, so do my kids. My son is getting all kinds of call outs in this episode. Just scream and pee. Yeah. Okay. Well, lights. <laughs> lights and high pitched noises. And yeah. people, I mean, bears don't really like to come in where people are. Yeah. So anything that that's that's I was going to say screams people, but that mm-hmm. would get us back to the high pitched noises. Anybody that talks about that feels like people, mm-hmm. they're going to try to stay away until you go to bed and you leave your food sitting out. OK. All right. So you're saying when I may be away from my camper for a little bit, I can like turn on a radio and then maybe put together a home alone um, situation yeah. with the cardboard people rocking around. Yeah. Yeah. The, and with the strings. Like it. So it I, looks I would, like there's people in my camper. I would camper. say just a radio. Oh, okay. <laughs> I would stick with the radio. All right, all so, right. so if you're leaving your campsite, just have an endless playlist of our podcast going. Oh. What a great idea. We will scare your bears away. <laughs> and we probably. No pee necessary. <laughs> and <laughs> people may not come to visit your campsite. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> like, yeah. Well, do not do that if you're in a campground. This is if you're in nowhere. Right, right. Now, now we mentioned lights. They, I guess. They mentioned particularly flashing lights on here. So they mm-hmm. don't want like a rave situation. No high pitched noises and no flashing lights. They're not down to party. They are they are not <laughs> down to party. They want your food. Citrus scents. You think that really works? You think a bear's like, oh my goodness, food. Oh, lemon. Bye. Yeah, I was thinking more like more like pelt them with grapefruit. <laughs> <laughs> don't pelt a bear folks this is going to get you mauled okay when i think i've told this story before when we went camping in yellowstone as a kid i was seven a guy said just bang on the back of a pot and the bears will come see, uh, well oh, we wanted, bears will come it will come to see you because we wanted to see a bear so naturally we, of Who course clamored for hours person? and hours well you know my parents were off doing something and me and my sisters thought okay we'll get the bears to come we got a pot with a wooden spoon and Lindsay, I know where banged you get on it. it and <laughs> yeah yeah we didn't know and guess what? A raccoon showed up. The bears came. They Are you did. serious? The bears came. And so, of course, everybody called the ranger. We were like, this is stupid. You know, the bears came, called the rangers, big hoopla. And then they said, the ranger said, well, don't worry. If the bear comes back, just pick up a rock and hit him in the nose. Did you try that next? How's your aim? What? I was like, like I could hit a bear in the nose. No, you have to walk up to it. Yeah. It's like, how is that going to happen? Wait, Wait, I'm confused. How did banging pots make the bears come? I don't know. It sounded like people were doing making food or yeah, something. Yeah, I'm I sure by know. now they've associated that sound with food is about to be made. What? That is bizarre. I've never heard that story. Oh, my gosh. And uh, of course, then we were all hiding inside and inside our VW van and yeah. walking in groups you know, with flashlights for the bathroom. It was just, it was wild. So. Like literally. Yeah. Yeah. It was literally wild. But really bears, cut to get back to reality, bears come into your campsite mostly for food mm-hmm. and mostly after you go to bed yeah. at night. But they don't want to be disturbed by humans, really. Yes. They so, don't like humans. They just want your food. Yeah. So, so you got to get that food dealt with you have to make sure all of your cooking cookware and all that is washed up and Mm -hmm. generally you don't want to cook right near your campsite anyways right if you're out in that kind of situation and you don't want to store your food in your tent you don't want to eat in your tent or your camper you want it all food away from camper yeah keep Mm -hmm. keep in mind that like no matter how careful you are crumbs are going to be dropped Mm -hmm. smells are going to be left over um dryer sheets Oh, uh, most animals dislike the smell of dryer sheets, and it also can help cover up the smell of food. So I wouldn't uh, necessarily store dryer sheets like in your cooler or with your food because that would be gross. But it's a strong smell that animals don't like, and it can cover up the food smell. So I don't know, maybe like rub a dryer sheet all over the outside of your trash bag. 
Maybe. Or I don't know. Throw one in the bottom of your I'm going to do bag. some weird stuff next time I go camping well, now. Well, <laughs> with bears, you just have to be really, really clean and yeah. wash everything up. And and don't eat right next to your campsite. Mm-hmm. Try to move away just a little bit for when mm-hmm. you drop things. And just get everything completely cleaned up and put your trash someplace safe. Double and, bag it. At, well, even then, there's still going to be smells, but that would be great. Right, but it helps. And they say, right. they say, I mean, if there's bear containers where you're camping, use them, the lockable ones. Absolutely. Um, and I've always been taught, you know, hang your trash bag. That it, you know, if you hang it appropriately, it's difficult even for the raccoons. No, mm-hmm. they will work together as a little yeah. army of I raccoons. I love them. But if, <laughs> if you can, don't make it easy. Right. And, and then they'll go to the campsite next to yours where they're not where, taking such precautions. Where they made yes. it easy. <laughs> so hang, hang them up. Um, this is one reason I love having um, just some rope or even ratchet straps. I love ratchet straps. It makes things so easy for hanging stuff or, mm-hmm. or locking up your cooler. Yeah, absolutely. One of my because favorite Because you've things. seen those videos of those bears just like opening car doors and oh, yeah. getting inside, opening coolers like that are fully secured right. and like the latch is on but they're nimble with their claws right. and, and for bears i you know people or people say talk about tent campers backpackers or people who have soft side rvs and pop-ups and they mm-hmm. they say good luck in bear country there is no that i've ever seen there is no bear proof rv out there if a bear wants in bear gets in i've seen memes of dogs who have chewed their way through an rv door that's a dog that's well, not a full grown bear. Well, and uh, you know, the don't don't do crazy things like cook bacon inside your camper and pour the drippings in the trash and leave it there. Right. Because bears can smell that. Your camping don't live residentially. That's right. You have to think about that. Everything that smells the bear is going to try to find to eat. So So, I mean, all of this, all this is good and well, but I really do look forward to camping in places where where all these things exist, in particular bear country. Right. Me too. Me too. And I am going to research a, you know, they do call them bear proof coolers and storage containers. Right. And then they say to wrap it up with some rope and to like throw a rope over a tree and hang it up. If you can get it 20 feet off the air, uh, off the air, if you can get it 20 feet off the ground, uh-huh. then it's really going to make it more difficult for bears to get to. And you can put everything that might be stinky up there. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. It, if that's possible. And uh, here's another idea out there that people have trouble wrapping around their head around. Like you have a really pretty, I would say luxury esque, maybe just straight up luxury trailer. Let me, let me just say you can, and anyone who has that category of RV can still get to these places. That's true. You, Absolutely. I may I may love these off grid t- trailers because it's got this little fake storyline going on in my head of mm-hmm. something I wanted as a boy, some experience, you know, yeah. all rugged and all that. <laughs> but the fact is, the trailer you have is a hundred percent capable of going these same places. You may have to choose your path a little bit differently to get there. It doesn't matter. You yeah. should try yes. to take advantage. You know who's listening. You should try to take advantage of what your trailer is actually able to do and get out of the parks that's right and have these experiences especially now when the parks it's so hard to actually you know get a campsite yeah so people need to get more comfortable with going out of the off the campsite routine but the hard part is the creatures so i don't know that we've given people great ideas but we've had a few these are things to consider yeah don't be scared of bear country just be careful and don't think that if you put it all inside your trailer, you're safe. And don't think that, you know, you can always keep a snake or a raccoon out of your campsite. You know, just do the best you can. Yeah. Understand that wildlife is there. Go have some fun. Yeah. Do your part. And and I, and, I mean, 100 times out of 100.1, you know, is going to be perfectly fine. Yep. And if it's not, yeah, we'd love to hear about it. What are your experiences? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that pretty much does it for this discussion. But I do want to remind you that our friends at Intech make products that can get you out there in bear country. And That's I right. don't care which product line it is. If it's their flyers or if it's their Lunas, their, the 
souls, the Terras, doesn't matter. They can go. If you're looking for a trailer, yeah, you you ought to check it out. IntechRV.com. And don't forget that you can send your questions or comments to questions at rvsmalltalk.com. And Clint, what is the phone number to call if you would like to just leave us a voice message? The phone number is 512-843-1311. And I'm actually waiting for someone to try it other than me because I've tried it a few times. All right. So (laughs) challenge him. Give us a call. (laughs) And we also like to add that if you guys enjoy the podcast, we would so appreciate it if you go on Apple Podcast. Give us a five-star review and write a comment. It really helps us to get our podcast out there to other people. So uh, uh, please do that for us. And we appreciate all of those who have rated and reviewed us on Apple Podcasts. Thanks so much. All right. Until next time, we'll see you.